I need to know who you are, not just what you did, and who you think I want you to be. Application Renovation Season 4. I can't believe four. Four seasons. Episode 1. How are you doing today? Doing great. How are you, Ryan? <laughs> I am amazing. I'm excited to jump into Application Renovation. Not for what most people watching think. They, they think I enjoy like tearing students apart and they're like, oh my gosh, you were so brutal. Um, but I love doing these because I feel like students make very common mistakes in their applications over and over and over and over again. And it's my mission to like squash those mistakes. So you made some of those mistakes in your application. I'll point them out. But hopefully you realize that it's because I want to help you. I want to help you get into medical school and realize your dream of being a physician. What do you say about that? Sounds like a plan. Let's get into it. <laughs> so, so give us the nuts and bolts. How many application cycles and how many interviews so far? So this is my first application cycle. I'm applying essentially direct. So this was between junior year and my senior year. Okay. Um, now we're kind of getting towards the end of this cycle. So, so far I've only gotten one interview request and that was for um, an in-state school. And I actually went to the interview and also got rejected from that interview as well. So that is the only you know, interview I've gotten. Not not as many rejections yet, but you know we're getting towards the end. So okay. you know. So out, outright rejection post interview. What do you think happened during the interview that led to a rejection? How'd you feel walking out of there? So personally, um, I felt you know a little bit more not necessarily completely disappointed, but I knew there were some key factors, um, and I also actually went back to a person from the admissions committee for that medical school, and I actually got some feedback for um, you know what I could have done to improve. Uh, a lot of uh, advice and information that they gave was specifically about you know when it comes down to that you know narrow of a margin to where from like 10,000 applications you get down to like about the 500 that interview you know every little you know body language physicality your presentability even your content that you present for those interviews and I had an MMI style uh, interview layout with 10 different interviewers um, and then we rotated seven minutes a piece yep. so a lot of those things kind of you know he was going over obviously they can only reveal so much but you know, it was very minor point deductions, but when it's all combined together as your total file, when it gets sent to the admissions committee, that's when they, you know, evaluated. So for example, you have another student, same stats, you know, same, very similar opportunities. Yep. They're going to pick the person that had, you know, not as many point deductions or just had an overall comprehensive application. So yeah, that's, that's the thing I, I got a lot as feedback. Another big issue was I was also working full time as well. And, uh, you know, when you get the interview call for me, it was a different field of expertise. I was a car salesman, funny enough. And, uh, you know, as a salesman, you have a very distinct, uh, attitude and pitch that you have to, you know, embody. So that definitely, I feel like, you know, looking back on, you know, that, that interview day, it definitely kind of leaked in a little bit. And obviously your passion for being a physician really needs to shine. Um, and you know, you just have to be a lot more direct and, you know, be more humble and have an open personality. So definitely mistakes were made, but yeah, it's interesting you say that because I'm going to point out in your application, a bunch of spots where that salesman mentality, uh, salesperson mentality comes out. So, uh, and, and I'll talk about why I think it's the wrong way to go about it. So let's go ahead and dive in. You ready to rock and roll? Let's do it. All right, so taking a look at your application, the first thing I always love to point out is when you applied and your application day was day two. What a slacker, couldn't even get it in on the first day. Um, obviously not an issue getting it in with the, within the first month or so, perfectly fine. You got it in, which is great. Um, so timing, not an issue. You obviously realize that that's an important thing. Uh, lots of languages that you're speaking, which is awesome. And then we get to SES disadvantage. I always love to point this out just because just students aren't aware when they print out their PDF, like, where does this come from? I don't remember marking that. And I always just, it's, it ties back to education level, which uh, on your application for, for your education level for your parents. Um, and we have all of that information redacted here. So just, just to let people know. 
no big red flags, which is great. No institutional actions, no felonies, arrests, etc. cetera. Uh, no military service, which is okay. And then we get to grades. Lots and lots and lots of good grades. 4.0 GPA, if I remember correctly, if I scroll down. Uh, right. And look, we got a 4.0 GPA. Uh, obviously, you're in your senior year. You are a traditional applicant, so there are no senior year grades in here. You have them marked as current and future here at the end, which is perfectly fine to do. The one thing that, that looking at your application, I was a little confused about is you have a ton of AP credits. And you have an AP credit here for General Chemistry 1, but I don't see any follow-up to that series. I see Organic Chemistry 1 and 2, but I don't see General Chemistry 2. I did take a General Chemistry 2 class, but I similar to how Bio has like a full years of like Bio 181 and 182, I actually only took General Chemistry 2 um, university level. So that's going to be, I think, like the page four, somewhere on the top. Let's find it, because I was really confused. Oh, it's above. Okay, that's weird. It's above. That's That was the problem. I was looking for it below where the AP credit is. It's above it. Okay. One of the <laughs> things, uh, general chemistry, not general chemistry, AP courses are tricky. I'm, I'm in a couple, like, parents of pre-med groups on Facebook, and they're all like, my kid's a, a junior in high school, and we have all these AP courses that we're lining up to take. I'm like, be careful with AP credits, because they don't really show off anything. Uh, you do get potential credit in college for it, and so, yeah, it looks a little sexy of, like, not needing to pay for those courses, but not every medical school accepts AP credit for prereqs. When you were applying to medical schools, did you do that homework and research of what schools are going to accept these AP credits? And did you have to adjust your school list because of that? Correct. So a lot of you know feedback I got effectively when I became a freshman was that university level courses are going to be a requirement regardless of a lot of medical schools where you go to. And especially nowadays, they're kind of uh, you know, pushing a lot more on various different, you know, upper division bio and chem courses anyways. So it's absolutely important to, you know, take that, you know, bio or chemistry, the gen level courses, university level to show that, you know, instead of just an AP, you passed, you know, you actually can do well at, at a university setting, basically. Yeah, but that's, that's not the question I'm asking. I'm asking when you were doing the research for your school list, not every school accepts AP credits. Did you find that when you were building your school list, you had to leave schools off of your list because they wouldn't accept your AP credits? Gotcha. And yeah, I did not prepare specifically for, you know, just based off of what APs I have taken. So that is definitely something to take into consideration. All right. So obviously GPA wise, fantastic, no big issues. I, I always talk about, uh, showing that you are academically capable of doing well in medical school. From a GPA perspective, you did that, which is great. So great job there. Um, so you got your 4.0. And then we look at your MCAT. And you took it twice, four months apart, six mm -hmm. point difference between the two scores. How did you score six point higher only four, uh, yeah, four months apart, less than four months apart? Yeah, so there's kind of a little bit of a backstory or a little bit of context towards why, you know, I decided to take it still within the same cycle. So initially, I was preparing to take it for May. So that's the first exam score you see at the bottom there. And funny enough, during the pandemic, we finally got the first dose of the J&J COVID-19 vaccine. So I got a very rare opportunity because uh, we'll get into some of the specific, you know, activities portion, but I'm involved with a group called Street Medicine Phoenix. And uh, we were able to actually procure the vaccines through the State Department of Health, and we were actually able to go out and vaccinate. So that took place, I believe, between March and April. So ultimately, I only had about a month to study for, you know, the exam coming in May. Uh, I made the mistake, obviously, I should have probably postponed it to the September date. However, you know, based off of, again, you know, misconceptions and just thinking about studying in a certain manner, you know, I didn't get the score that I wanted, but I knew I knew I could do better. And instead of just kind of giving up and waiting to take a gap year and 
totally kind of blowing out my attempt out of the water. I, I decided to kind of buckle down and, you know, study again. You know, I was still working, but um, took, you know, a leave just to study. And then that's where I kind of came back and, you know, decided to take it Got again. It. Got it. Obviously, much better score, much higher and and a good score. 509, it's two points lower than the average for matriculants. But 509 is a fantastic score that that most schools will not have an issue with. So uh, MCAT score, GPA, both look good. Okay, so from a stat perspective, I'm like, okay, let's let's see what else is there because the stats are not closing a lot of doors for you. Okay, so then we get to activities, and here is where I think we start to have some potential question marks. You have this first experience here uh, listed as a publication, which I think is a little weird. Uh, this Curtains TV series pilot. Now. This show, I, I don't know what this show is. Uh, I, I remember a, a year or so ago getting lots of emails of like, hey, we're, we're pitching this new show for pre-meds and blah, blah, blah. Uh, are you interested? I don't know if that's this show or not. The very interesting thing about this, I look at this and I go, hmm, like, is this a red flag or not? And and just just for everyone watching, like when I give advice on here, I love taking things to the extreme. So not all of this is always my opinion, but I always give the advice of there could be one person out there who's looking at your application and goes, yeah, this is terrible, right? And so I'm just trying to look at things through different lenses as I'm reviewing things. So this could be a potential red flag and, and we'll get to the rest of your application uh, in a minute, but knowing what else is on there, I start to wonder, do you want to be a doctor or do you want to be an actor slash model slash superstar slash whatever, right? And so I have this seed of doubt in my head already. That's this question. So interesting experience that you did this or are doing it or wherever you are in the stage of this, uh, but potentially a red flag for someone looking at applications going, I need to accept a student who I need to predict is going to be here for four years because that's how they build their cohorts of like, okay, we have 200 seats in our classrooms. We have 200 students. We want to be here. We have 200 spots in the clinic rotations, third and fourth year that we need to fill or else there's not enough bodies in the hospital, whatever. So the admissions committee is trying to pick people who they think are going to stick around. And I see this like, I, I'm a TV star <laughs> kind of experience. And I'm like, well, maybe what's what's going on there? So I, I kind of put that to the side. That is not an automatic, like, I don't want to talk to you, but it's a question mark, right? The writing, how you wrote most of your descriptions is very sales pitchy. And, and I'll, I'll point it out as we go. You talked about here, I was able to gain additional experience assisting the production with other media projects like music videos from my video background. Okay, like interesting. I, I don't know what that means or why that's important, but okay. Not the worst, not the best, but okay. We'll, we'll get into some other ones. One of the things, this this next one, we have presentations and posters, uh, your honors thesis, high fashion and motorsports. One of the things that I constantly ran into reading your descriptions was confusion. I okay. was confused a lot reading your stuff because I didn't know what it said. Uh, whether you were using some jargon or some words I didn't understand or just the sentence didn't make sense to me. And I, I think I'm particularly good at this because I'm a terrible reader, <laughs> which is like, I'm a terrible reader, so you need to write to my level. And if you're not writing to my level, you're writing at too high of a level, gotcha. right? We, and, and we talk about that all the time. There's tons of research with, of politicians and writing styles and everything else. The lower education level speaking that you do, writing that you do connects with more people. We're dum-dums all inside, <laughs> right? There are lots of pretentious people out there, but we like to just read very basic things because it's easier to internalize, to think about, right? We as humans, we love to uh, save our energy for when we need to run from the saber-toothed tiger. And so big words and, and big sentences are really hard to process. So I, I read this first sentence here. 
Thesis defense was performed with allocation of multiple resources accumulated in the past to demonstrate unexpected collaboration between two very distinct industries. Colon, blah, 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 blah. I read that, I'm like, what did you just say? I have no idea what that means. I have no idea what I'm reading. It would take me four or five times to read that to try to understand it. I need to move on. I don't have enough time, right? As an admissions committee member, I got 100, 100 files in front of me. So just general advice, write small. Write to a lower education level and not try to sell like, ooh, look how verbose I am, okay? Same thing at the end here. The result was quite interesting in that the impact of influence and interactivity is relatively universal across all occupations. And with a clear goal or end product, the sky is the limit. What? I I don't know what you're talking about. So one of the things that you did very often in your experience descriptions was you didn't let me understand who you are. And this is the same message I give every single episode on application renovation. I need to know who you are, not just what you did, and who you think I want you to be. A lot of your experience descriptions are what you did over and over and over again, what you did, what you did, what you did, without helping me understand who you are so that I can connect with you as a human being and go, oh, this dude seems really interesting. I wanna invite him for an interview. Okay. Right. So big sentences, big words, very verbose, disconnect, and then not showing who you are, disconnect. Okay. And and the application is connection, connection, connection. Right. So then we get to experience type uh, here, your paid employment, not medical clinical. It was four months, about 30 hours a month if you work out the hours. Is that about right? About 30 hours a month? Yep. Just a- Your description here basically says, I'm only doing this to show you, the reader, that I can work hard and get down and dirty. My assumption is that's exactly why you did this experience. Which is okay, (laughs) right? But don't tell the reader that, right? Right. Don't tell the reader that, right? Keep Those are like inside thoughts that come out. Mm-hmm. You're, you're allowed to do things to, to think about like, well, how can I, we were talking before we hit record about doing some different types of experiences that you think will help you stand out, right? At the end of the day, every student going through this process is trying to stand out, which I don't think is the right mentality to have. Everyone does it, right? And so you're going through this process thinking, well, what can I do differently? That's not a scribe. That's not a medical assistant. That's not whatever. And, and how can I build skills that I think are going to be important for being a physician that show I can work hard, that show I'm not, I'm not uh, kind of against um, uh, doing and putting in the work and, and slaving away in, in, the, in the sun and all of this stuff, right? Maybe potentially for you specifically, you're kind of trying to, to push the pendulum back because you do have this TV production thing, because you have an experience here that we'll get to that is modeling, and you're like, I, I want them to know I'm not just a pretty face. Right. Right. And so I'm going to show them that I can go work in the sun and, and work with my hands and do all that stuff. That's okay to do, but the way you wrote about it seems like that is what you're doing. Very forced, right? Value of labor and efficiency in applying for future occupations was my purpose for this job. You literally told them, I'm only doing this to build the value of labor that I can then sell to you. Right. Very sales pitchy. Going yeah. back to the theme. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so we we go to the most meaningful description. Again, my parents did not believe an inkling of what I told them a few days prior, that their literal model son was going to work stucco and moreover for the reason of understanding the value of the difficult work. Again, literally saying, I'm only doing this so I can show people I value hard work, which you think, right? And and again, I, I'm very hyperbolic when I do these things. I, I expand it out, which you can then sell to the admissions committee through your writing, through your interviewing of like, right. 
I'm not just a model. I don't just stand around and get pampered and have photos taken of me. Like, I work stucco. Did you not see that in my application? Right? You only did this so you can sell hard work. Which I think is both true and then, and then the, the, the inside thoughts came out. Okay? Right. <laughs> so you, you could have potentially told a story of the hard work without selling that you did it to show that you are okay with hard work. We'll keep going. Research lab, uh, you're a medical dermatology specialist. Again, your experience description, what I talked about earlier about what versus why and who mm -hmm. you are. Uh, this is basically just a list of your job duties, right, of, of what you did. So I don't see you in it. I don't see your impact. I don't see uh, who you are in this position. I just see what you did. Right. Um, honors, awards, recognitions. We get to uh, a list here of things you did, which is great. You, you had this thing here, which I've never seen before. Proof of awards, honors, recognitions will be happily provided upon request. You, you don't need that. It's just a, um, a, a thing that I don't really have anything good or bad to say. I'm just, you don't need that. So um, just extra characters that are wasted there. And then we get to uh, your medical directive, co-founder and president. You talk about peer complaints of rather limited scope of undergraduate pre-health organizations drove me to found the organization to establish an equalizing factor for all driven pre-health students. Again, I get back to like, it needs to be easy to read and understand. I don't know what an equalizing factor is. So I read that going, it's just sales pitching, right? It's just big words that, that are trying to show off here. I don't know what it means. I don't know what you're talking about. So I'm just going to keep reading without really in, 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 internalizing it much. What, what did you mean by equalizing factor? Basically, a lot of students come from a variety of different backgrounds. And, you know, as that organization grew significantly over, you know, the past year or so, um, it's basically just to make sure that every person, regardless of their background, that is pursuing a path in health, the health related fields has all the resources necessary. So kind of setting an equalizing, you know, playing field, I, I would say. But, you know, I, I totally agree. The wording on that definitely kind of confuses as far as driving the point home, basically. Got it. Now I understand what you mean by equalizing factor. Okay. Got it. Um, so the, in, in that discussion that we just had that helps me understand, right, the, the people reviewing your application don't have that benefit. And so you need to, again, I, I'm using these words, dumb down uh, your writing so that someone looking through the application can quickly understand what's going on, who you are, what you're doing without needing to go, wow, I need to have a really in-depth conversation with this student to try to understand what's going on, right? And a lot of students purposefully try to do that thinking, oh, they're gonna think I'm just amazing. And during the interview, they'll have the opportunity to ask me these questions. But a lot of times it won't even get to the interview because like you lost me already. I need to move on and, and try to go connect with another application. All right, we get to fashion model runway uh, and published. And so here's where the, the quote unquote like pejorative pretty face, right? I don't mean that in a, a bad way, but just um, the, the pretty face experience comes in of potentially why you have this stucco experience in there and, and other stuff. So um, your model, great, awesome experience that I'm sure a lot of people would love to talk to you about because it is different, right? There, right. there aren't a ton of models going to medical school. Uh, and so again, instead of helping me try to connect with you as a person of like what it was like to walk down the runway for the first time or what it was like for your parents to see you in a magazine or on the web uh, for the first time, emotions behind things, instead of allowing me to see through your eyes, you just kind of give this experience description. You, you try to tell a little bit of a story here uh, but I think it goes a little bit off. You, you have this last kind of couple sentences. Witnessing a fellow model being vocally teased by others was like an immense pressure crawling, trying to grasp up my tongue to not speak up. So again, very fancy kind of language that took a second to try to understand, grasping my tongue um, to save my spot in the model lineup. So again, very kind of normal thoughts. Do I say something? Do I not say something? I, I'll get some flack for this. I don't know if you should say these inside thoughts 
on an application. Because again, we hope that you're going to speak up no matter what. Right. Right. Because that's just the world we live in. Are you going to speak up when a colleague shows up drunk to go operate? Are you going to uh, are you going to speak up right in the medical field? We have a huge problem of people not speaking up for fear of retribution. We have a whole podcast series and TV show called Dr. Death because people didn't speak up. And so, again, these outside or inside thoughts coming out, I would probably just leave it off because what's the point of it other than it's expected? Like, of course, it's normal to have that thought, but I'd probably just leave it off your application so people don't judge it in a way that's like, oh, this person may not say something when they have a, a friend cheating on a test in medical school for fear of kind of disrupting that, that friend group. So right. you do have here in the last sentence, the thought of trauma and negativity cast upon those models propelled my voice to expose the rea reality behind the curtains. And so you have this sentence here and then I'm like, well, what happened? <laughs> What's the follow-up? Tell, tell me what, what was the result? I'm left with lots of questions here. So could have been told in a little bit of a different way to show the impact that you were able to have on, on these people, protecting them or whatever, All right? Help me see you. You, you have your street medicine, Phoenix. You talked about it a little bit earlier. This very interesting uh, activity that you did. It was over um, a couple of years here uh, that you have. And, and a lot of your experiences, just, just to point out, they ended on 621. Is it because it truly ended or it's because, well, that's when you're submitting your application. So that's when the end date's supposed to be. Correct. And I, I was kind of confused at that specific, you know, how to frame it so that it's still ongoing. However, you know, for the time of submission, I guess, you know, for me at the time, I thought it was better to just cap it at that specific, you know, time of when I sent it out to all the medical schools. Yeah. And so what it looks like is I submitted my application, like I'm done with everything. <laughs> I'm going to go, I'm going to go live in paradise and go be a model TV person. Um, <laughs> What you should do, and, and this is very important, people need to read the instruction manual for, for AMCAS, ACOMAS, and TMDSAS. ACOMA, or AMCAS very specifically says, project out the end date to the start date of medical school. So for you applying here in 2021 to start medical school in 2022, the things that you were going to continue to do, expected, to continue to do, and, and obviously plans change and things stop or whatever, but the things that you assumed you were going to continue to do, the end date should be July or August of 2023, 2022, 2022, yeah. So uh, that helps the school understand, oh, this is something you're going to continue to do. And then you can also project out the hours as well. So, um, and lots of students are, are worried about that. They're, they're like, oh, they're going to think I'm exaggerating my hours. Like, obviously, just be honest and 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 uh, be as, as kind of forthright as possible. So this was about a 20-hour-a-week project. Is that about right? Yeah, or okay. about since I was a sophomore. Yeah. Okay, so very busy thing. And, and the one question I had here was, is this clinical? Were you administering vaccines and, and doing things there? Or were you more kind of an organizer of everything? So it was kind of a little bit of both. Initially, I started off as just a patient navigator, so scribe work. And then it okay. translated when I became one of the co-leads to doing blood pressures and also, you know, checking blood sugars, as well as, you know, providing uh, different medical services alongside the medical students. So that's that's where it kind of, you know, the the there's like a gray area you yeah. know, in between, but yeah. And, and that's okay that there's a gray area because a, a large percentage of, of what doctors do day in and day out is admin work and, and, and stuff that isn't quote unquote clinical, like, like we define it. And so uh, again, just from a, an activity description standpoint, being as clear as possible, what is it that you're doing to help me understand? So I don't have to second guess, like, is this clinical? Is this not? Um, and again, the, the sales pitch stuff here, all right? Uh, in the most meaningful remarks section, second to last sentence, you say, above all else, my recall of networking interactions in the fashion and motorsports industries provided the persuasion necessary to vaccinate. 
So you're basically like, I'm a persuasive guy because I've learned these skills from these other industries, which again, the sales pitch, like, I don't need to know that you're persuasive, that you're going to be able to convince people to take their vaccines when you're a physician, whatever. I want to know who you are, not who you think I want you to be. Right. Okay. And, and to me, that alone is a dead application versus a good application. I just want to connect with you. Um, we get into research lab preventing falls in Parkinson's, Mayo breast cancer. So kind of two things here, which is perfectly fine to combine some things. Uh, the last sentence looked like you ran out of space and you're like, I'm just going to put uh, this non-O for non-obese. Uh, you have training, uh, HIT training followed a similar apparatus as well with the post-exercise hypotension study of obese versus non-O. I'm assuming non-obese. And I, I, I was like, why are we saying that? Because that's that's in the next experience, at least how it's printed here on the PDF. Why are you talking about that here? Okay, so again, just a, a, a description that's mostly about what happened and what the study was about and not necessarily who you are in this study. Same thing with the next one as well. Uh, we get hobbies, tailoring. I love hobbies on an application. I despise when students try to sell me skills that they have from their hobbies that are going to make them good physicians. I just want to know who you are, right? Whether it's running marathons, fishing, whatever it is. And so you have this tailoring, which is really interesting. And, and you'd sold, right? Mechanical knowledge allowed me to take apart the sewing machine and retime the gears when there were issues with the spool. And I gained the technique of handling threads from thick to very fine. You're like, ha ha. I know that doctors use sutures, which are kind of like threads. Uh, and so I'm going to show them that I basically got this. The practice has been certainly applicable to suturing and brings a perception of controlled discipline in handling. In, in handling any item. Sales pitch, right? Mm -hmm. I got you. I got you. I know how to handle a suture. That is not what gets students into medical school. Your ability to suture, your fine motor skills, your whatever does not get people into medical school. Okay. Connecting with another human being, being yourself. If you would have talked about like the best, finest garment that you made and the colors involved and how many stitches were in it and why you made it, like I would have loved to connect with that. But instead I'm reading, hey, doc, I just want to let you know that I know how to handle sutures. You right. see, <laughs> there's a difference there, right? Again, I'm very hyperbolic when I talk like this, but there's a big difference there. Got it. All right. Uh, community outreach leader, again, just more duties, no impact uh, from a description. Uh, artistic endeavors. Again, I would have loved to see photography, videography, what you love about it, ha how shooting video and all this stuff uh, helps you just be a human being and connect and all this stuff. And all I get is it bolstered my networking skills and furnishing business relations for future projects. I'm like, okay, I get it. You, you, you're a good networker, communicator, all this stuff, right? Uh, the efficiency of rendering content via Adobe Photoshop Premiere, blah, blah, blah. Right? Like, I'm efficient. I got it. I, I'm surprised you didn't even take it a step further of like, this could be applicable to using EMRs as a doctor. Like, I will be very efficient with those two. Um, so just lots and lots of the sales pitch. Right. All right. Let's, uh, let's keep going. Uh, I'll, I'll scroll through these. People can pause if they want. Um, again, just lots of duties and, and selling. Let's get to your personal statement. I, I wrote a, a statement here that says, never start a personal statement like this of my true passion for medicine, or I knew I've wanted to be a doctor since, or I've always loved whatever, right? As soon as I read something like that, I know that I'm in for a doozy of a personal statement that probably isn't going to be very interesting to read. Remember, these are human beings reading these personal statements, scanning through as much as possible, as quickly as possible to kind of go to the next and next and next and next. And, and it's just not a very interesting way to start a story, which is what the personal statement is, a story of why you want to be a doctor. So um, 
I would, I would try to stay away from that type of writing. And then you talked about my passion for medicine stems from the impact of my parents who struggled through immense obstacles from their lives in India all the way to visualizing a life of opportunity for my little brother and I. What's the goal of this first paragraph here? Basically to kind of showcase, you know, that I am a first generation student and, um, you know, a lot of the struggles of living with an immigrant family being, you know, with, with the stigmatization of how, how, you know, physicians and medicine are, you know, just to kind of fight the battles and try to make a positive change. Why do you think it's important to highlight that you're a first generation student? Uh, I mean, personally, uh, what a lot of what I've you know been seeing a lot with, especially us as you know Indian applications, it, it's difficult to kind of stand out amongst that crowd. I don't know how it is, you know, directly behind for different admissions committees, but being part of kind of like the model minority, basically, you know, it's it's difficult to push forward in the sense of you know showcasing why you want to become a physician and also. A lot of the activities, they kind of lean towards, again, the sales pitchy mindset. And obviously, um, uh, the Indian, right, the a- Asian Indian uh, kind of um, ethnicity and, and racial group, if you want to call it that, is there are a lot of Indians in medicine for good reason, right? There are lots of smart Indians, both coming uh, from India, having trained in India, and lots of smart Indians here in the U.S. who have immigrated because those Indian parents, very typical to Jewish parents and and Asian parents, are like doctor, lawyer, engineer, right? That's what you're going to be. And (laughs) and so I read this and I'm like, I don't understand the point of it other than to point out that you're first generation American and basically I want to be a doctor because my parents made sacrifices. Which reading the underlying tone again is, I have Indian parents who want me to be a doctor because they came to this country so that I could go to medical school. Gotcha. Right. <laughs> it's, it's the stereotypical Indian parent, Jewish parent, Asian parent, whatever. Right. Um, so I don't think it belongs in a personal statement. The personal statement is why do you want to be a doctor? And I understand that you're trying to connect some things here that probably there's really no connection other than you just wanted to call them out, which is okay. You could have saved some of this for a disadvantaged essay. Right. You could have said, yeah, I'm first generation American. Here's my my family situation. Here's where my parents work. We didn't have a lot. I had to do this. I had to do that. So that could have been a great disadvantaged essay to give context. I, I love now to call the disadvantaged essay the context essay, which is what you're trying to do here in this paragraph is give context. Right. Okay. Yeah. So then we get to a little bit more of the medicine side of things. And you have this, this horrible thing that happened to your grandfather. And I wrote very negative here. And, and obviously it's a, a terrible thing that happened to your grandfather. And, and I get a lot of flack for like, don't talk about negative things. Talk about the positive things that come out of them. Again, just human psychology. We, we don't like to hear about negative things, although it drives lots of clicks on, on social media and on, on websites and stuff. Um, but you could have potentially talked about the same experiences without some of the negativity about just um, the exploitation and subversion of IAF officers and blah, 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 right? It's, it's hard to read, right? Because it's sad. And so it's like, do you want to write something that someone is going to want to push away? Because it feels bad for them. So just just an, an observation there. Um, again, the negativity, right? If the attending physicians paid even a little more attention through active listening, they very well might have saved numerous additional lives at the time. Right? It's a very hyperbolic kind of statement of like, just do your damn job. And if I say this, I'm letting you know that I'll do my damn job because I'm a good listener because I wrote it in my activity description above that I built my listening skills through all of my networking and everything else, right? The, the connections are starting to be made. This is how students build their application of like, all right, I'm going to sell networking and, and communication and this and that. And then I'm going to hit them in the personal statement with bad listening and bad communication. And they're going to see that I'm a good communicator they should accept me, right? So 
we have we have some stuff here that again just doesn't go to why do you want to be a physician? Show me these experiences. And obviously what happened to your father, very impactful thing, or your grandfather, very impactful thing that leads to that, right? You then go into this COVID-19 pandemic on the subcontinent of, of India, right? The Southeast kind of subcontinent there, Southeastern, yeah, Asia. Um, yeah. And the, the discussion is, it seems kind of random, of like, obviously, COVID decimated India for that Delta wave way back when. Um, but it seems very interesting to throw this in here with not a lot of context other than to do this kind of Phoenix street medicine thing that you were able to do, which you've already talked about in your activity description, but you basically rehash it here in your personal statement. And so it's, in my mind, wasted space, wasted discussion, because you already talked about this above. So I'm not sure why it's here in your personal statement, because it's not adding to why do you want to be a doctor? It's just telling me something you already told me already. Right. Okay. Um, again, some negativity here. Our world is a very peculiar place. Okay. The successes and accomplishments of individuals are highly resonant and praised, but the countless hours of errors, failures, and mistakes are out of sight. What's the goal of that sentence there? I think it was just to kind of showcase how everybody kind of, you know, praises how somebody achieves a certain thing in life, but nobody ever really understands the enduring hours and the struggles that that person took to get there, basically. <laughs> Do you think that's true? I'm not sure just because unless it's actually actively spoken that you did struggle or like if people actually see that you did go through, you know, basically all these trials and errors to get to that point, um, then it is sort of one of those like media type things of if, if it's not, you know, spoken of, then people really don't oh. focus too much on it. Okay. But, so you use this to then talk about this organization that you started to help pre-meds who I'm assuming you're connecting the the errors, failures, and mistakes of these pre-health students and how you came in and, and saved the day with this organization to help them. But again, you talked about that in your activity description above. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't need to be in your personal statement because it's not helping me understand why do you want to be a physician other than you created this organization to help a bunch of people, which is great. But I don't need to hear about it here. Right, wasted space. Wasted <laughs> space. Um, and, and so you you have this, f uh, to fulfill my dharma. And I'm like, okay, there's a word I don't know. All right, so again, uh, jargon or specific language from your culture or, or wherever, um, be careful using that because mm -hmm. I'm going to have to go Google that. What does dharma mean? I think it's like goodwill kind of uh, karma, dharma, karma. Uh, um, <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, be, be careful with words like that. So I get to the end. And at the end of a personal statement, I ask myself, do I understand why do you want to be a physician? And I get to the end of yours, and I don't see anywhere in there that really talks about why you want to be a physician, other than that very opening sentence about how you were kind of driven to medicine because your parents sacrificed a bunch. Which isn't a logical connection, right. right? You're driven to succeed in life because your parents sacrificed a lot. But that doesn't mean you need to be a doctor other than, again, the stereotypical doctor, lawyer, engineer, figure it out. <laughs> so right. I, get, I get to the end and I'm like, all right, I, I don't know why you want to be a doctor. You do have some clinical experience that you could potentially lean on um, to write about. We look at your school list, and for the most part, it's great. Lots of uh, private schools, out-of-state private schools, the, the couple of public schools where you are at. Um, and so nothing terrible about your school list. I think at the end of the day, I get to your application, the end of your application, and I go, you just you didn't allow the reviewer to connect with you as a person at all. Right. Great. Like I just, I go back to the tailoring uh, activity. I would have loved to visualize some beautiful, colorful garment that you made. 
right? I've been to an Indian wedding. I've, I've worn, I forget the, 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 the name of the clothes. I, I, the, the clothes are just magical, right? To be able to picture what you're making would have been fantastic. And I would have been, oh, this is so awesome. I want to talk to this person. So then we get to, uh, I just want to take a look at one of your secondaries here. Um, I, I've been looking at secondaries a lot lately. And it says, if you were to describe the University of Arizona College of Medicine Phoenix to someone else, what would you share with them? And so the first kind of half of the, the answer, you kind of answered the question. And then you basically are like, okay, I'm done talking about what you want to talk about. I'm going to talk about what I want to talk about. And this is the biggest mistake that students make with secondaries is not answering the question and forcing in your own agenda, right? You were like, I would also share my personal story with the blah, 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 blah. Okay. So right. answer the question. Don't fit in your own agenda. Again, what achievement are you most proud of in your life? What aspects of this achievement will you bring to our medical school? And your first sentence is basically like, I'm not going to answer your question directly. I'm going to tell you something else. You're like, I am particularly proud of my constant, uh, constantly developing perspective above all else. Is it achievement? Not in the conventional sense. I love that. You're like, just, I understand I'm not answering your question, but uh, I'm going to tell you what I want. You'd be a very good politician. That's what they do, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> so again, just very, very, very common mistake of not answering the question in a secondary will frustrate a reviewer to no end. Be like, just answer the question, please. Like, I just want to see what you're going to say. Lots of discussion around application. Again, biggest mistake, probably the same on every episode, is just not allowing that connection because you're, you're trying to force this narrative of like, I can handle sutures, I can communicate, I can convince, I can whatever else it is. Like, everything I'm doing... I'm going to show you how it's going to help me as a physician. Right. Questions. As far as, you know, now that I look back on the original primary statements that I made, like I, I knew there was so much sort of like the sales pitchiness that is very kind of standard stereotypical of like what I think us as students need to think that, oh, you know, this is what we need to do to get in. But realistically, after going through, you know, the difficulties of like, you know, secondaries, that single interview, honestly, that was a big eye opening experience. Um, and just being direct. So just cutting out the fluff and going straight to answering and diving in basically yeah. why you did the things you need to do. So and, and in a weird way, it like made it more profound of like why I want to pursue a career in medicine. And so, you know, throughout the year, that's where I kind of cut a lot of the, the other, you know, extracurriculars, if you, if you want to call that, but you know, that it really drove my passion for medicine that much. More. Good. And, and ultimately it, it'll drive the passion because you're doing it for yourself and not right. how can I write about this? How can I sell it? How can I, whatever. Uh, but it should, everything should get easier because it's your truth right? and not some forced narrative that you're trying to pitch. Great first episode of Application Renovation here on season four. Thanks for coming on, being vulnerable, and, and let, uh, letting me kind of pick apart your application and highlight some things that can be improved. Awesome. Yeah. And I feel like the more open we are or receptive to change, I think that's ultimately what drives success. And, you know, for us going into be physicians, really, you know, making as great of an impact as possible. So I uh, thank you so much. <laughs>